We were taking all of our layers off. Back up the yes. hill. Right, right. Back up the the whole thing, and then, but if you slow down for a second, Real ditch at the end, and then Woo! wind got knocked Ooh. out of me. I couldn't breathe, oh, and I was lying scary. there apologizing to my brother for everything I might have done because uh -oh. I thought I was dying. I was like, <laughs> I'm oh, so gosh, sorry. <laughs> Do kids wear helmets sledding now? You know, they like should. skiing. Every uh, they, they should. I don't did you, think so. Did you see that IG that. post where that guy let his go? Wait, you never stopped. <laughs> it was crazy. <laughs> there is like nothing as fun as sledding in the winter when you're oh, a kid. You I right. mean, really, it's just pure joy. Yeah. All right, you guys have a good day. Uh, yeah, be careful out there because we have a lot of rain in parts yeah. of the south. We've got ice to talk about. We've got cold air. Mm -hmm. Everything. All of the above. Yes. Even thunderstorms. We'll talk more about that yeah, later on. Yeah. But uh, thank you so much for joining us for America's Morning Headquarters to get you through the mid-morning hours. The Weather Channel helping you plan for all of your big events ahead. And today, it, the top story really is the cold, the ice, the concerns for winter precip coming on in. We're also going to talk about some of the top catastrophes of last year and right. talk about what that teaches us to go forward into this right. one. And also, you know, remember Christmas weekend, how cold it was? Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. We are rivaling that kind of yeah. this coming week. <laughs> yes, yes, maybe for some of you it's worse. We'll get to all of it. Well, in fact, you'll need a nice uh, cup of soup maybe from yeah. what packed it in the coming days. You'll want to stay off the roads if you can. Maybe work from home, but those of you who work from home, you may lose your Wi-Fi and your power may go out as a result of the freezing rain that we're expecting. So freezing rain and sleet, we see these happen, especially this time of the year. They're both basically ice, but they form in different ways and they can have different impacts on the roads as well. So as we take a look at the combination here, the difference between the two, sleet actually bounces off the surfaces. It bounces off your jacket, makes a noise. Sleet has a beat and it can accumulate out there on the roads and sidewalks. Freezing rain looks like innocent rain coming down. You don't even know that it's freezing because it's very hard to tell, but it does form ice on those surfaces, especially the elevated surfaces, as well as the roadways, the sidewalk in front of you. And there's just the worst type of precipitation you can possibly get. So here's a look at our total forecast going from tonight through Wednesday. Again, a prolonged period of ice accretion. So it could get up into that category of a half an inch to three quarters of an inch. Even a quarter of an inch to a half an inch is devastating in parts of Arkansas, western Tennessee, northern Mississippi, definitely on the lookout for the freezing rain, rain that could accumulate. So a trace to a quarter inch definitely watch, you know, affects your travel, affects walking down the driveway to get your mail. Tree damage, though, and some power outages, that results when you get in that damaging category of a quarter to three quarters of an inch. And anything over three quarters of an inch, that is crippling. You're talking widespread tree damage, power that could be out for not just hours but days and in fact we've got a high chance of at least a tenth of an inch or more very high confidence in that um, but you can also see quarter inch or more we're pretty certain Jen it's going to happen somewhere down here in Texas on that I-20 quarter Reynolds Wolf by the way will be reporting live from there coming up later on today and winter storm air churning up an air. We have it in a lot of different places to the north. And that's exactly where we have the cold air making that comeback. I mean, after New Year's Eve, we saw a big warm up, but now be ready for it. We've got 80 million with highs below 32 degrees, literally freezing for 99 million of us tomorrow. And even Wednesday, especially the northern tier of the country, we are still going to be looking at those highs at 32 or below. And those overnight lows going to be brutal. As a matter of fact, take a look. Uh, the average lows this time of year for Minneapolis, right around nine degrees. We're forecasting highs of around zero. So you can see Green Bay, Des Moines, Omaha, and Denver our forecast high temperatures are going to be cooler than what we typically see during the overnight hours. That's how cold it's going to be. A little bit of a shock to the system, especially since it's been so mild since the start of the year. So make sure you bundle up and cover up as much as possible. Wind chill advisories all the way down into the panhandles of Oklahoma and Texas. But we see that darker shade of blue over into Idaho, parts of, you know, uh, Minnesota. We've got those wind chill warnings in effect. That means it doesn't take long for frostbite to set in, in a matter of five or 10 minutes. That's really about it. Look at the wind chill value right now. Pierce, South Dakota feels like minus 26. Feels like minus 20 in Minneapolis. We just showed you St. Paul, the winter carnival going on there. So make sure you are completely covered up as you head out and about. Minus four. We're definitely going to be feeling below zero in a lot of places like Chicago, like Omaha, Nebraska. Even St. Louis is going to feel like those single digits when you factor in that north wind. But where you see the lighter colors on the map way up here to the north near the Canadian border, the icebox of the nation living up to its 
name there in International Falls with those wind chill values well below zero, Jen, even as we go all the way into Wednesday. And so that cold air doesn't get strong mornings. They are not just for today. They go all the way through Wednesday. Yeah. So it's kind of a prolonged period of that icy precip that we're expecting. There'll be multiple chances of this wintry and icy precip coming on in. And it's complicated, Kelly. It's a, a type of system that you really need to look at all the details city by city, hour by hour, and break it down. That's what we're here for, yes. you guys. So <laughs> come on over here with me. We're going to talk about the Southern Plains and the fact that we do have cold enough air, at least at the surface. And of course, with the moisture being thrown into that cold air, it results in the freezing rain, the sleet. Depending on that column of air right above you, it's not just about the temperature reading right outside your kitchen window. So here's a look at those winter storm warnings in the darker shade of blue. You've got the hot pink on the map here too. Not a pretty color when it comes to our advisories. We've got ice storm warnings, including Little Rock over towards Memphis and even northern Mississippi. We could see some serious ice secretion out there that weighs down the trees and therefore results in some power outages. High pressure steering that cold air around all the way down through the southern plains. Those temperatures have been dropping since yesterday. So we already have the cold Arctic air here, that moisture also flowing in from the Gulf of Mexico. We've got disturbances riding that jet stream and unfortunately at the surface, a front that's really not really going to go anywhere. So that's going to result in this icy mix that you see in the pink stretching from portions of Kentucky, Tennessee, all the way down into Texas. So it's going to be, you know, a few days of this, unfortunately. And then where you see the green, days and days of rain, of course, way up to the north there. In parts of Kentucky, you guys get a little bit of snow. So let's talk about the ice. It's going to be thick here. Look at Dallas, right on down towards the Waco area, Abilene. We could see some serious ice secretion out there, anywhere from a half an inch to three quarters. That doesn't sound like a lot, but trust me, it, ice is very heavy. It weighs down those tree branches and power lines, Little Rock, expecting anywhere from a quarter to a half an inch of ice. So you can see that our total ice forecast in that darker shade of pink, it's going to be a damaging situation. Schools will likely not be in session. You've got after school activities, even your work. If you can adjust and be flexible, maybe work from home, that would probably be best. You'll want to stay off the roads because even with the glaze of ice under a quarter inch, that can cause some problems on the sidewalks, the, tree, uh, the roads as well, some tree damage. That starts to happen when you get over a quarter inch to three quarters of an inch and it's crippling. And yes, we could actually reach three quarters of an inch of ice. And when your power goes out, maybe out for days, not just hours, unfortunately. We've got a high chance of seeing that glaze in that darker shade of purple. That's a tenth of an inch or more. And it's also a pretty decent chance that we see a quarter inch or more in some of these areas like Western Texas, moving into Fort Smith, Arkansas, Little Rock as well. But notice how the pink and purple they're not going away anytime soon. We've got even into Wednesday morning before we finally wash it away with some rainfall uh, Thursday into Friday, Jen. Yes, now the cold air, the Arctic subtropical jet. And you might think, oh, subtropical jet. Hmm, it's going to be warmer air. Uh, no, we have some cold Arctic from a virtual view of Continental Avenue Bridge here in Dallas, Texas. Now, right now, we are mainly just looking at cloudy conditions. We're going to see a little bit of some freezing drizzle early on today. That's actually been already happening. But really, everything will start to change as we get towards later today. A wintry mix, a freezing rain, and sleet is in the forecast. The region remains under a winter storm warning through at least Wednesday. And so I want to talk through the different types of precip you could get here. It really is going to be a very complicated forecast and it has to do a lot with what's happening throughout your entire atmosphere above your head. So Dallas winter storm warning mentioned that this whole area in darkest blue is under that winter storm warning that includes all the way down through Waco even into Austin. But let's take a look at how things are going to play out. So this is the surface temperature right at 32 degrees. That is the critical mark, right? And then you look over to the west like Wichita Falls and over towards Abilene. Our temperatures are, are even colder and there's actually a little more cold air at all levels of the atmosphere. But in Dallas, we're right on the edge. And so that's really key. At the surface, now we're looking at the whole atmosphere. At the surface, 32 degrees. But you have to go way up to the top and see what's happening. So at about 18,000 feet, it's three, it's snowing. Then you jump down to 10,000 feet and even 5,000 feet, our temperatures are above freezing. So that snow has now melted. Is there time for it to refreeze into sleet? Probably not. So that's how you get in a freezing rain scenario because we are below freezing at the surface. Things are going to be changing, though, throughout the event. We fast forward to tomorrow afternoon. This is now Tuesday afternoon. We're going to do it again with another wave of precip coming in. Snow melting because temperatures are above freezing aloft. But then we go down to the surface and now it's 30.
and that is sub-freezing, everything freezing on contact. And there's a lot of moisture in the atmosphere too, and so the amounts are gonna be significant. Now, one thing I wanna tell you, by Wednesday, and certainly by Thursday, things start warming up. And so while it might be cold all the way up high in the atmosphere, you're gonna have temperatures warming up above freezing at the surface. That's so key, right? I mean, it's such a complicated atmosphere that we're dealing with as we look ahead for the rest, uh, really the next couple of days, but in general this week. We've got temperatures for you today that are gonna be um, looking at uh, jumping over to Abilene. This is where we'll be even colder and being colder actually is going to help us out a little bit here. It'll give us more of a chance of sleet and less of a chance of getting that freezing rain like we have over towards the Dallas area. All right, Kelly, then the, the cold, show you what we're dealing with here. This is how much we've had so going back to the start of the year. Look at how widespread we've had five to eight plus inches of rainfall. It's not like it's in one pocket. Everyone, it's been a very rainy start to 2023 here and more moisture coming on through right now. You're seeing that pass through parts of Georgia and we already have some rain out there in the Atlanta area uh, for your uh, commute this morning. It's been a wet one. Some of the heaviest of stuff now farther south and we've got Charleston and Savannah getting some of the rain. It's not getting everyone at the moment. Charlotte, we're dry right now, but there's still some showers yet to come on through. Just kind of a murky, cloudy sort of day with some shower chances, especially for the first part of the day. But all those disturbances that are causing the icy weather in Texas and Arkansas and Oklahoma, those are going to be also moving into the south and help pull up more moisture. So that's why we have a pretty wet forecast for you this week in Montgomery in Tallahassee. Rain is going to be in the forecast here for several days. So your forecast today, showers move out, get a break. Next chance comes in Tuesday. Um, we see Tuesday afternoon, a lot of that rain is in Louisiana and then southeastern Texas like Houston. But by Wednesday, it's again moving into parts of the southeast. And then you look at Wednesday, the next one is setting up already here into Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, and that too will be moving over into Alabama, Georgia, and South Carolina, and North Carolina by the time we get into Thursday. So it's rounds of rain this week, and I think the key is just that we're not, we're not going to get a taste of that truly Arctic air like you have into parts of the Southern Plains. So that'll save you a bit here when it comes to that problem. But rain itself will be an issue. I mean, look how much. We've got two to three inches of rain into northern parts of Louisiana. And Kelly, when you look at the, the forecast here, we know in January. This could be how bad it could be with right. all this moisture and it could be cold in the southeast. Yeah, typically we yeah. can get that wedge which it gives could. us that ice yeah. across the right. Piedmont of the Carolinas yeah. and into North Georgia. So I guess we're lucky in that regard. Exactly. But I miss the nature trails. They're too muddy right now. That's true. You gotta hit the concrete and the oh, pavement yeah. trails for sure. And it messes up traffic. It really does. Well, Mother Nature is not the only one cooking up the sick cold air to the north. It's setting the stage for all that wintry precip that Kelly was just talking about. This is where the heart of the cold air is, right up here in the northern plains where temperatures are in the teens, the single digits. I saw some sub-zeros like in Minot, North Dakota. It is 15 below right now, and it feels like 35 below. Oh, this is this is the coldest of the year. Um, now, last year, of course, we had a cold snap in December, which might have been a smidge colder, but still, this is significant, and that cold air is oozing in all the way down into Denver, where temperatures are going to stay chilly today. Widespread area where temperatures are going to not top out above the freezing mark. You're all the way down into Kansas. We've got you know spots across parts of the upper Midwest going to stay cold, and some of those colder temps sinking all the way south into Texas, into Arkansas, into Tennessee, and that's why we do have those wintry precip concerns. Going below average here, or below 32, not just below average, but how about below 32 degrees for your highs across the nation today, 80 million people. We've got 99 million tomorrow and then 62 million still on Wednesday. So especially to the north, it's a really cold week ahead. Temps for you today only topping out in the teens and 20s. Uh, and then to tomorrow to Chicago, that's your high temperature. 10 degrees. It is going to be cold out there. The wind chill advisors will be a factor. The wind chill warnings are up as well. They continue through this morning right here. I'm I just like it's morning. like a hot soup. There are soups that serve cold, but I do not care. Not in the winter. Yeah. In the summer, will you eat it? <laughs> not even in the summer. Oh. <laughs> is so unsettling mm -hmm. when you can't see at all like that. Well, we all know that ice is dangerous when it's on the roads, but it's also hazardous on trees and power lines. Yeah, meteorologist Stephanie Abrams tells us five things you need to know about ice storms.
I storm concerns in parts of the southern plains and lower Mississippi Valley. But here in the northeast, it's a little bit of snow. We'd much rather that powdery mm -hmm. snow. Obviously, powdery snow can be a problem with the visibility, but we don't want that heavy wet snow either. Right. It can result in power outages. So it's a light snow in Detroit right now. Uh, back to Milwaukee, we've got clouds and nine degrees. And over here in Buffalo, we've got some snow coming down. Yeah, it should be no big deal kind of snow because it's light. But you saw what happened with that on Friday in Wisconsin. So oh, yeah. take it all seriously. Even a little bit of snow on the roads can make it slippery and cause you to have some reduced visibility. No snow, Boston, New York City, Philadelphia, all looking fine for today. Our consecutive streak continues <laughs> yes. here. New York City, congrats. <laughs> we made it to, you know, the latest snow on me uh, measurable snow on record, and we're going to keep on adding to that record. You see the snow breaking out from the Mohawk Valley through the Helderbergs um, into the Berkshires and beyond into New England as we go overnight into tomorrow morning. Yeah, so if you get anything, you get a couple of raindrops there in New York City. Meanwhile, in Buffalo, we'll keep some snow showers going on throughout today. Definitely that wintry feel to the air. Temps are going to be in the 20s. Snow showers flying around through the air as we get through the day. It's about a one to three kind of inch snowfall. Yeah. Probably about an inch. I mean, it's light snow throughout the day, yeah. so the plows will be able to keep up with that kind of snow. You have maybe the possibility up here in the DAX. We could see anywhere from three to five inches, but I tell you what, Cuse, we are down. And yeah. you're, if you're a snow lover, you're not loving this year's yeah. season so far. I, everyone is down outside of Buffalo, where, of course, we had those two big events, but everyone is down. Harrisburg running about seven or eight inches. New York, Philly, Baltimore, D.C., nothing so far this season. That's a story we keep talking about because it's yeah. a big deal to be this far below average. And even in places where we have had snow, like Providence, Boston, Portland, we're still down more than a foot if you look at just Providence and Boston. So we have a ways to go. So we broke the latest first snow on record in New York City. The next thing to break, the next record to break, is the amount of time between uh, days without snow. If we don't get snow through Sunday, New York City, we will break that record. And there you have it. Yes. <laughs> Raindrops, not snowflakes, yes. as we head toward the end of the weekend. You can see why. Temperatures are just too warm for the snow. Yeah, the cold air is that matching up with the precip. Mm -hmm. Well, don't forget our question of the day with some of the dreary report released today by Gallagher Re. Natural disasters totaled $360 billion worldwide last year sounding the alarm for the need to ramp up mitigation efforts. So joining us right now to talk more about the report is Chief Science Officer with gallagher Ree, Steve Bowen. Uh, Steve, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Let's dive right into that report. Of course, Hurricane Ian actually topping that list, making it one of the costliest tropical cyclones ever recorded globally. So what lessons were learned in the aftermath of that storm? Yeah, well, thank you for... 61% of all global disasters were not covered by insurance last year. So what does that mean for the everyday person? What can be done to reduce that number, too, in the future? Well, it means we have a lot of work to do. Uh, the United States uh, has the most mature insurance... ...when it comes to the problem that we're facing. So how can we better plan in the future for these climate-related disasters, you think? Well, it all comes down to communication. Obviously, the Weather Channel has an incredibly... ...play a role in that in planning ahead. Now, we look at weather patterns. We call them teleconnections as a driving force in some of these uh, potential big events. Uh, last year, we had a La Nina. There's that potential shift now from La Nina to El Nino. How will that have an impact on your planning and looking ahead to the areas of biggest concern? Yeah, I think that that's a great point. That's one we're already... Third direction. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we appreciate it. By the way, is something most people are familiar with and many people actually like. Yep, here's a closer look at what causes the sometimes pleasing aroma and why we're so sensitive to it. How it about that? It definitely, it, there's definitely a smell. And I've been reading a book, um, I need to finish this book, but it's called The Desert Smells Like Rain, and mm -hmm. it's a completely different smell in the desert southwest. Really? Oh, it depends it on the soil, I guess. The soil right. and the plants and how, yeah. It's very therapeutic. There's a lot actually. of earthworms that come up to the surface. I always thought that smell was had something to do with the worms. Yeah, or something, I think you know? it's a yeah, very earthy. I mean, very yeah, earthy sure. smell. Um, Plenty of it. <laughs> this is why our yards are a little muddy these days. Uh, we've had a lot of rain since 2023 began, especially down into southern Mississippi. You see the pink on the map. Uh, that correlates with more than a foot of rain. And so it has been a wet, soggy time. Luckily, most of this has been just of the rain variety, but unluckily, it's caused problems. We've seen flooding. Um, we saw it yesterday in Houston. Yeah, and severe weather. Let's not forget, it's been a yeah. very active month yeah. with that, too. Um, but you no know, severe weather out there today, just some downpours. We've got rain going on in Birmingham. Uh, some heavier thunderstorms, though, just off the coast of Georgia. South Carolina, a little lightning embedded within that. Uh, but otherwise, you will get breaks in the action. It's not going to be every hour of the day we mm -hmm. get rain. But it doesn't really clear out. It's like you've got a, a 
front that comes through in between these disturbances to clear you out, to give you a nice sunny day. The subtropical jet remains active this week. That keeps the moisture in place. These little pops of energy come through and that just brings a reason to make it rain. So my daughter was like, well, when's the best day this week? I'm like, we're just gonna get waves of rain. I, I can't really tell you when the sun will be out exactly, but End this just week. gives you an overall, next week. <laughs> next week, there you go, an overall idea of the situation. I mean, there's your dry time, Atlanta, Birmingham, your evening commute, so much better than the morning commute, yes. right? Uh, but there's that pink showing up on the map too, and that's that freezing rain potential, mixed precip up across portions of Tennessee as well. You really get a sense of like the waves. You know, think about when you're in the ocean, the waves come crashing in. And so that's what's gonna happen this week, just waves of weather move across, and we've got at least three disturbances, so we've got at least three chances coming through. So with all that rain, we could see some flooding. Some of the streets flooding, we've seen it in Houston of late. Uh, mm -hmm. Piney Woods of Eastern Texas, getting into the parishes of Louisiana between Wednesday and Thursday, especially when we expect some of that heavier rain to occur. And when you go back to just how much rain we've seen so far this month, and when you bring more into an area that's so saturated, you can't help but have problems. There's the Friday forecast, seeing the showers mm -hmm. move out, and maybe that's when we get our break <laughs> Finally, beyond that. Another yeah. reason to look forward to Friday. Yeah, right. uh, but there's that flood potential from the Carolinas, Virginia, all the way down to the Gulf Coast, watching between Thursday and Friday uh, with some of those showers, especially thunderstorms that can really enhance those rainfall rates. Another couple of inches of rain, especially in Texas, Louisiana, where we've got two to three inches of rain, just repeated rounds coming in here, plus direct access to moisture. It doesn't necessarily come all at once, but, um, you know, it'll add up over the course of a week. So have your umbrella handy no matter where you're going here in the south the next several days. And don't forget our question of the day, by the way, this weather might need to be able to just hop a train and not have to worry and about parking. And not worry about traffic. You could read. <laughs> you can, I mean, maybe it's because more people sit at podcasts and books, so they kind of pass oh, the time that way. Yeah. Um, um, potholes, though, that's an issue, too. Yes. <laughs> yeah, wear and tear in your car. Hey, we got some yeah. snow coming our way. Chicago is yeah. one of those cities, though, it's kind of down in the snowfall. We are running a little below average, but interestingly, across the Midwest, like on the other side of like Michigan, they're above. So mm -hmm. just kind of where you are. And Minnesota's doing well too. With yes, the snowfall, just Minneapolis for sure. All right, my city pick, pick today total is only 34.9. So we're down about 10 inches from where we yeah. should be. So winter sports enthusiasts are not all that happy about that fact. Right. But we do have snow showers on the way for this evening. Temperatures, by the way, should be in the upper 20s. We'll get there today, and then it gets really cold by the weekend. We're right. talking single digits. So you saw a lot of folks out there and about doing some shopping, whatnot. Right now, that's a good plan because yeah. it does get a lot colder. Yesterday was a balmy 40 degrees, <laughs> which is way which above is, average. Which is, yeah, above average. Well, you can find your city of the day in a language that works for your... I mean, I agree with her, like, only add a few crunchy things because you don't, like, crackers even. You don't think it's soggy. Sounds interesting, though. There you go. And so you don't need a lot of cheese. There are alternatives. Just and I, I make, um, instead of chicken noodle soup, I'll make chicken with cauliflower rice. Oh, that's really yeah, good too. That's good. Lower that carb, good. better for you. Yeah, a little Cook more vegetables, more vegetables. Oh yeah, and soup is like the easiest thing to make. You just throw everything in the crock I pot. know. You I just know. cut up all your veggies, whatever broth you want. I don't even cut them up. I just put them in. Just throw them in yeah. there and let it go. <laughs> like just mash the carrots instead of like chopping them up. There so you go. cook them and then mash them. Set it and forget it. Yeah. Best kind of dinner ever. <laughs> we'll be right back. When the sun <laughs> and you can keep Congratulations. on Congratulations. The big controversy yesterday, though, was the Empire State Building lighting up in green for the I Eagles. I know. The, the best was actually reading all the comments on social media. Yeah. The New York Giants tweeted, I'm just here for the comments, <laughs> basically. <laughs> yeah. In case you missed it, the Empire State Building went green and white. Right. In honor of the Eagles, we'll which see is what a happens. big rival to the New York Giants. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see what happens tonight. Do the colors change? <laughs> Thank you for joining us on America's Morning Headquarters. We'll get you through the mid-morning hours. The Weather Channel helping you plan for all of your big events ahead. We've got a lot to talk about today with the threat of ice and snow and sleep. But really, it's the ice that we're most concerned about. Yeah, and the rain just sticks around yeah, all week long for much of the south. And it's already been a soggy start to the year. We'll dive into that eventually. Uh, but you will need...